I'd like to call this meeting order at 602. Welcome everybody. Um, we do have a new member and Olivia, what's your last name again? I'm sorry? Leone. Leone. And everybody can go around the table, starting with Judy. Hi, I'm Judy Pierce. I am the Frontier Rep from Sunderland. Hello, I'm Lynn Roberts from Sunderland, too. And I'm Bob Decker from Deerfield. Keith McFarland from Sunderland. Patty Cavanaugh, business manager. Lynn Carey, um, superintendent. Bob Hallow from Waitley. Bill Cantor, Conway. Mary Raymond, Deerfield. I'm um, Darren Myers, I'm the student representative for this meeting. You know me. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I show up everywhere. <laughs> Before we get all that all done, uh, I'd like to approve uh, minutes from April 5th and a special meeting from April 23rd. And if there's any questions about any of the minutes. Do I have a second? Second. One second. Any questions? Yeah. Mr. Mr. Decker, I think that your attorneys, our attorneys are going to want, or the attorney that's going to certify the title uh, for the sale of the real estate, may want a uh, roll call vote or a record of the roll call to make sure that there was the proper requisite number of people voting, and uh, so I would just suggest that it. You know, the tally be minutes be amended to show that I voted against it, you voted, you abstained. Yeah. There were two members absent, Billy Smith and, uh, and Lynn. And Lynn was absent. And the others voted affirmatively, so you've got to turn on and <coughs> add the numbers up. To I already sure have that, that done. I <coughs> print that out. Uh, well, I can't print it out right now, but I, I did record the vote that night as I normally do on something that could be controversial and i am going to try to pull it up right now for you to tell you what the number i think i didn't i tell you the numbers that night bob i don't think you had it that night i did yeah you did so is that a motion to amend the minutes we haven't approved them yet so once we have the number we could just i think what's what's a, what what's what's approve uh the meetings uh, minutes from april 5th, 5th first we have a first and a second from April 5th. All in favor? I think everybody was there, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just look. Olivia, because you weren't there, I'm going to put you down as um, <laughs> abstain. Yeah, because you know what? I don't, it's not here. I have the file and it's empty. I, I, I think I forgot to save it. Well, anyway, we, we need to... Because I read it to him that night. We need to incorporate it in the minutes just so that there won't be any question later on passing title. Are you talking about the weighted vote, Bob? Yes, yeah. So Cindy Wimet was here and she voted yes. Yeah. Phil Cantor was here, he voted yes. Bob Decker voted no. Mary Raymond was present and voted yes. I know I did this. Bill Mayor PZ uh, yes. was here and voted yes. Mary Rain. Uh, oh, and Bob Decker. It was Damian Fosno. He voted yes, That's Bill and Mary. So Bill wasn't here. Bill Mayor PZ. Oh, was no, here. Bill Smith wasn't yeah. here. No, Bill Mayor PZ was. Judy Pierce, you no. voted yes, correct? That's correct. And Lynn Roberts, you voted. No, you weren't here. No, sure. You weren't here. It was Keith, were you here? Yes. Okay. And uh, William Smith was not here. Bob Holla abstained. So it passed 4.6, uh, well, total vote 7.595.5 to 0 0.98003. Well, just, just amend them. Just include it in the, in the minutes. Okay. That's what it and was. And now I'm saving it 10 times. Okay. That's the first time in two years my notes got amended. Okay. All right. Let's take uh, care of that. Yes, I was just asking her if she understood what the hell we were talking about, the way to vote. Because I'm not sure if somebody 
Maybe no. we need to explain it to her? Yes. <laughs> She's going to sit here for three years. Yeah. She needs to know why we do this. Okay. A few years ago, there was a court case down the other end of the state called, I think it was Kelleher. It was a, and it, it's called One Man, One Vote. And the courts found that the school committees, such as ours, had a, had a proportionally vote. So the votes had just decided proportionally, some of them, and some of them are each town gets a vote. Each town committee representative, Bob Hale, uh, Mary Raymond, uh, Phil, and, and Keith, get one vote apiece. Okay. And the rest of us have percentages, okay? Based and, on the census. Yeah, and it, it varies between, it varies between the towns. Right, based okay. on the last national census so, population. Anyway, I fought hard to get that proportional vote <laughs> because for years, Deerfield had three votes and there were two in each of the other towns. So we, we, we had a third of the vote and we paid roughly half the cost for all those years. And yet we survived. We did. <laughs> we did. But anyway, that's why we do it. And it's not very often we have to record a roll call vote. Okay. It, most of the time, things are unanimous, except when guys like me vote. So we have a motion on the change of the minutes. We have to vote on that first. And to then include the tally. Do we just get one vote, Bob, now, or do we have to vote on both the amended? Well, you should vote the vote the amendment to the minutes, okay. and then you vote the whole thing. So you're going to make a motion? Yes. To, okay. And who seconded it? I will. Thank you, Judy. So we're talking about the amended weighted vote. All in favor? Aye. Stain. What is Stain? He wasn't here. Stain. 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 Oh, Stain. Okay. So that would be 702. Yep. Okay, for the minutes. Amended. Move so moved. Three. So moved from Bob. Second. Judy. All in favor? Aye. I can't. Bill can't. Yeah, oh, that's the longest I spent on accepted minutes in a long time. Well, I just want to make that's, sure we, no, right, we don't have right. a headache when you go to. You're right, Bob. Then the minutes will be voted. Ms. Cavanaugh, are you ready for? I am. So I have. Um, we have lots of papers. Lots to talk about tonight. So um, you had, I sent you 23 warrants. Totaling one million four fifty eight thirty eight dollars and fifteen cents, and you happily signed those for me tonight. Um, I did not get the uh, report out to you early because I had spent an extensive amount of time with it, um, and I wanted to make sure it was in um, in, in good order. So um, now I just lost my. Copy, but that's all right. I can, yeah, but these say my copies on there. So, um, well, I thought I'd share, but do you want me there? No, that's all right. I can use this. I, I, I'll find mine. Okay. So, this is the report. If we look at the variance report that I've been doing all year, and we're going to go down to the bottom uh, that starts with the tuition accounts. And right above it, it says total budget savings at 131 was 6587 my first note is when you're looking at the math on this sheet, disregard the calculations as they are redone in April. So I'm leaving them here because we were looking at them, but when I'm doing my math, I'm starting with the 12,051.52 to the positive that we were at in December. So right now, our tuition accounts, our out of district tuition accounts are over budget by 25,887.99. This was due to two unexpected increases in tuitions awarded by OSD. Um, they, they set the rates. Um, we also had, we do, we still have a potential decrease if a placement changes for another student. Um, and that's something that our SPED director is still working on with um, a state agency. Uh, but in the meantime, we had to put another student out. Um, right now, we can use the excess in the summer support line of $7,878.36 to offset that. 
Um, the second thing on here that I, we were looking at is um, since the fire, the fire chief ordered us to put in a new hood over the kiln in the art room. We've only got one quote so far to have it, to get that done, and it's ten thousand uh, dollars. Mr. Lesko thinks that's high, and he's trying to get more quotes, but he's not getting anybody to answer him. So, apparently, this was not an order. This was a request, and that a hood is not actually required. It's just desired, and um, you know the. Uh, uh, to me, fire code either requires something or it doesn't, and if it does not require something, we ought not to do it. Um. Yep. My understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, Darius, but the fire marshal said we must have the hood in by a certain time. We cannot use the kiln unless the hood is on. Yeah. Yes, I mean, he was kind of... He said, since you had a fire, I can require you to put this in. And that a device like this is going to give up chemicals when it heats. Now, according to other, this is you know, controversial because according to other potters, they don't have vents on these things because the clay they're using isn't giving off. They're not doing precious metals and such. Um, and that, does this really fall under the fire marshal's purview? Now, we were obviously victims of a fire, <laughs> victim. Um, and so we were kind of in the, what we'll do what we're being asked to do, and amongst other violations we had in the buildings that we were correcting. We didn't know it was gonna be this much. And so we corrected all the other issues with the building, and then he said, well, where are you on the hood? And we said, we're getting quotes. He said, please send me when you sign an authorization. Let me know, and then I'll sign off in the building when you get authorization to spend money on it. We, 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 when you uh, put money down on, the, on a quote, on a, on a person to do a job, rather, we haven't reached that point. So basically, we have this kind of open-ended, you gave us 30 days to comply, we complied with everything else, and this is one where the question is, does it fall under the fire marshal permit? I don't know where the answer is to that. But he's not signing off until we do it. And he, and for my no, understanding, he he and I don't know who off. to consult on this, but my understanding that fire marshal has a lot of leeway in this area. And so the question is how much, and how much can you push back, and then how much would it cost us to push back, and then, you know, should we have a vent in there or not? And so we're trying right now to see if we can get that away from 10,000, closer to under 5,000, and then put that in as best, best practice, I guess. Um, you know, so. The problem is, the, I was going to say the one thing is, why don't you just fire at night when no one's there? Most of the firings last 24 hours, so I guess you could do it over weekends and such. But but the fire had nothing. The actual fire had nothing to do with the kiln. It was because somebody put a box on it. Correct. <clears throat> and so this is one of those things. There's not a lot of kilns out there. So when you go to fire code, they don't. There's not a. If you have a kiln, this is how it has to be hooked up and vented. So the kiln is actually vented with some um, venting pipes that would be similar to how you would vent a dryer, okay? Um, they use some flex pipes in some certain areas and didn't like that at all. However, that it was installed by, you know, when it was installed, it was, you know, I believe it was signed off on when it was installed. But, you know, it, we're kind of in that weird spot because we don't know what the, we don't know the specs of a kiln and who to call for specs of a kiln on those kind of things. So um, a lot of the newer kilns now, they have venters, they have vents on them to, you know, so they can do these metals and that kind of stuff. I mean, this one is only about five or six years old. I mean, I was here when we got it. Yeah. Um, and so it's not that old and, you know. Bob, how often do we use it? And what would it cost to take the item that's gonna be uh, fired to, to another kiln? So it doesn't cost us ten thousand dollars to be used. Uh, I would think you're right that it does cost every couple. I mean, it does cost. It does be used every couple of weeks. They, the students, um, you know, do a sort of project, and then when they get enough to fire, they fire together. Because um, it's also process. There's glazing and all this other stuff that, that takes place as well. So um, I don't know, we, we invested a lot of money to get that kiln to suddenly not use it. Well, I, I, you know, I mean, I know that at ten thousand, you start 
talking about that, but that's part of the program of the arts there. So um, it is it is a nice thing to have, and it is something we brag about when we talk about our arts program, being able to do 3D art with clay now, um, and fire it there. Is it complicated what you're trying to put in it, or is it just going to go over the kill and it's going to have a hose and a fan that's going to drive it out to the wind? It's going to be made out of sheet metal. It's going to be made out of sheet my, metal, but yeah. And my next question is, does the tech school show uh, the students there have any expertise that maybe they could fabricate us something like that for a lot less than ten thousand dollars? Again, I'm not on the lead on that, but that's we got the initial bid. The initial bid was too high, and now he's trying to see, you know, work with you know the people we have doing general HVAC work with us too to see and if the other person I was thinking was probably uh, Blake Gilmore. I don't know, Blake Gil, Blake right. Gore. Right. Yeah. That he might. Uh, is that your name? Yeah, yes. I, I know who it is. Okay. And uh, he does uh, sheet metal fabrication. He does. And he's, yeah. Well, I can hear him. He's pretty good at it. We'll give his name a button. I'll write it down. Yeah. I'll, I'll send him an email right now. Right. So, anyways, if we had to find the ten thousand dollars, we would. There's two thousand dollars left in our acquisition of new equipment line, and Darius was going to give up seven thousand nine hundred thirty-one dollars of his general supply money. Um, but we'll hold on that. But it's, I'm just reporting what I was, uh, you know, that I, these were the things I was asked to find money for. Well, we don't have much money left. I understand that, Bob. I'm, uh, I know. I appreciate I'm just, it. I'm giving you what I was asked to do. But is it possible just to push back on this? Ask, ask the fire marshal what, what part of the fire code is he, it, it does this, because, because there's, you know, regulatory overreach is, you know, is just a guy that, is extra cautious and wants us to do more than what is required. And it, when you think about it, it wouldn't, it would not have prevented the fire. That's correct. So, spent. That makes it even sillier. And it's not an Ansel system. It's going to spray everything Philip, down. If it will make you happy, I have a friend who is a fire chief. Yes. I will call him. Yes. I will ask him his yes. opinion. Yes. Please do. He's pretty local too, so I can call him and ask him. A lot, a lot of times, you just push back a little bit; it goes away. Well, he's always told me if you push back, you're going to regret it. Well, <laughs> uh, it's not, you know. It's, yeah, you know, that was, that was I know. <laughs> well, that's it. that was his advice to me on another issue. You that push back, bad, you're going to regret you it. Should be worried about it. No, um, and I, but I do feel that was the initial was that you are you are on the uh, the graces of. Of his judgment on certain things, you know, and so, um, you know, we were trying to be you know, most in compliance. The last thing you want to do is be a school that's not compliant, then that issue is later on. So, being a second opinion on it, I think that's fine. I mean, I can have another conversation with him about, um, you know, I could certainly use the weight of the school committee. We'd like to have an answer, you know, where is this, you know, where is the documentation to justify the spending of this kind of money? Uh, because it's, you're right, when you're talking about $10,000 versus $500 for a, you know, a range hood, you know, because um, that's essentially what it is, is a very large range hood. Um, you know, it's a good question. And so but that's where we're at. So thanks. Yeah. When you say sign up, get him to sign up. Sign, sign off on what? He, he did an inspection of the school. And so he found us in violation of the hood. We had, we had a lot of violations throughout the building on small things. You know, you can't have a piece of paper within five feet of a door. Okay, because if someone lights on fire, you can't get through the door. Except if that, except that that piece of paper is directions on how to get out of the building or the <laughs> lockdown. <laughs> and landing. And so, 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 but we went through, and there were certain things like we painted tiles in the art room. You ever see that's really beautiful? Well, that's not flame retardant paint. So now we have to paint over all of them with a fire retardant surface. So we ordered that paint to do that. We didn't have the curtain documentation to show them to show that the curtains were ready to be go, were good to go. We've since found that documentation and we got signed off on that. That was the big one. That was like the mural on the corner that painted over. The, 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 oh, that's all right because it's not it's a non flammable. But it's, can, there was used to be a blur. Yeah. Can I make a suggestion? If we can get this cost under five thousand dollars and it would be a safety issue, it would help us as a safety issue. Would we be okay with that to do that? I mean, it's not going to hurt us to have a hood over the kiln. It is going to hurt us to spend ten grand. But if we can find someone to do this for five grand, and we're adding safety to the building, is that so hard? Realistically, we will probably 
um, it'll probably take till the next meeting to get it lined up. Mm -hmm. We can get things lined up and bring it back, and then we can know exactly where we stand. Right. Your research, other bids, other ways of doing it, and then come back with that number. And then we'll have a better idea where we are with the budget at that point, too. So we can make even more informed decision if that's what we want to go with that money. Blake's a townie, maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, he, you know, he, he grew up in town. He went to yeah. the Franklin County Tech, though. Uh, that's all right. We won't hold that against him. No, he and his brother <laughs> both went there. Uh, they were with the... Uh, uh, understand this is not our fire chief. Daughters. This is the right. fire marshal. Mark, this, this is the state fire, fire chief marshal. is enforcing the fire marshal's request. This is the state fire marshal. This, this is, is the state, state fire, fire marshal's marshal. office. That's so why it's a different. That's why again, it's not. You know, it's not us you know, working with the. You know, we're working with the local. They kind of carry out and they make sure that we carry moving forward. But this is not. Um, they're doing what they're being told. To do. So we don't leave anything on top of the kiln anymore. We stopped that. We stopped that practice. We found that it was not effective. <laughs> it did fire. Yeah. Uh, so it does work. So, um, okay, so the other line that I was um, researching was the salary for retirements. We had budgeted $37,978 and we've spent $8,299.68. What we had done was we had a large sum uh, for a teacher budgeted for FY18, but we used FY17 leftover funds and encumbered it so that this is free to be used in this year's budget. So this is um, $29,678.32. Uh, I worked with um, Mary DeLusa, our food service director, today. We did our lunch financials through April 30th, and as of right now, the loss is $41,816.10. But to note that if we did not have the one-time consultant cost, we would be showing a profit right now of approximately $8,700. So we are on the right path, people. We are on the right path. Um, at the end, and then the last item we had, well, two items. Um, last At the end of last year, you, um, the school committee approved $25,000 to fit, do stages, I think, one and two of the library roof, and we encumbered $25,000. The actual cost exceed, exceeded our estimation of eight, by $8,425. So we did the first part, which was $17,300. So we have $7,700 left in encumbered funds, which will flow through income. And then, so we need an additional 8425 and we need to get this done. The vendor um, said he would hold his price through spring. So if we can find the, give Bob the authorization to spend the additional 8425 we can get the, is it the, the window part it's of it? These windows up. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's still to stop that leak there. So we, we, we fixed the leak that was going there, but we had that open tile there forever. So that's been fixed. Next part is to do that. And then further on down the line where our building subcommittee is working on is the the envelope above us here and what we're doing there. So but that's the and, five uh, part steps there. The last part, um, the regional transportation, we have $21,379.22, and that is mostly from the fuel adjustment clause that we saved that much money. So right now, our total budget savings at April 30th, if we did all those things, would be $20,746.32. So we're still at the good, even if we had to spend the 10, which we're hoping we won't. Um, but I would like to have um, a vote um, for Bob to finish the $8,425 so that we can go ahead and authorize that work to be completed. Bob? The question I have is we got $20,000 that we forecast to have at this point. If we use the $8,400 out of the regular budget, yeah. it's not going to leave us very much wiggle room between now and June 30th. Okay. I might suggest that we do have a rental account that had some money in it, and I'm not sure what the number is in, in that account. Uh, that possibly we could transfer some of that or, or do the right kind of accounting to, so we don't have to take it from what our operating budget is because we don't have any room to wheel at all. The only problem is, is that you have to use the money to get the building in order to rent and we don't have many rentals of the library but the cafeteria is underneath it oh we don't have many rentals of the cafeteria either nobody ever rents a cafeteria no they people use it but they don't rent it 
Patty, can you? Uh, I'm I know. Up, I know you're I'm looking, looking it up right now. I know. I figured that. <laughs> I just want to make sure that we don't end up without any money and have to go to town meeting and beg for money. Would you want to put a freeze on our, on everything, Bob? It might be appropriate, but I think we need to fix the windows. And while we're talking about towns, uh, our budget is approved. Uh, we've got three out of four on our budget, and we just have to go to Conway um, because we're three for four on the tractor, but that needs to be a four for four. So we're, that will happen on the 14th of May. We will be going to Conway to, uh, to see if they approve our tractor. How's that look, Phil? It looks good, actually. You don't see a problem. Knock, knock on wood, but... Um, you don't see a problem with the tractor or the budget or... No. I hate to say that. I hope nobody's watching. <laughs> <laughs> I hope nobody's uh, watching. Yeah, yeah. But um, Phil is your new select person, too. <laughs> Are you? Next Thursday, as of next Thursday. Oh, congratulations. Unless somebody writes. He's going to be doing double duty. He's running candidate against you. He's going to be doing double duty. Actually, triple duty. He's at Conway Elementary. He has Frontier, and he'll have. Have, uh, yeah. Is there anything else, Patty, that you want to talk um, to us about? I know you're looking, you're trying to look that up. While I'm doing that, um, we did, I, um, at the recommendation of a few school committee people, I did find a, an attorney who is a graduate of Frontier, and I believe his children attend Frontier. And I met with him, and we um, discussed the purchase and sale. His main um, concern was um, if we had any oil, uh, anything underground, and I told him that we had that taken care of and remediated last year. Um, and I did tell him also that our concern is that we would um, we would want to keep um, the our our um, files there for about six to twelve months, depending on to, so that we had a plan to to move them. And we will be meeting with a company. Uh, on May 9th. Is that tomorrow? Yes. We'll, uh, we'll be meeting with a company tomorrow on that. Um, and when I spoke to Mr. O'Bear uh, to let him know, to, to find out who his attorney was, so I didn't call the same attorney, Mr. O'Bear said he didn't, he did not have, he was not going to have an issue with that. So, um, so I don't know because this was the, there was a building committee, so I gave everybody a copy of what um, Attorney Goodrich has prepared for us. Um, and I don't know if anybody, I know, um, Mr. Decker, you'd like me to send the formal vote, which I will do um, to Mr. Goodrich, so he has that. Well, I think Mr. Goodrich, or, or the attorney representing Mr. Olbear, is going to be probably requesting a certified vote of the board that authorizes the sale. Because okay, when they so go to certify the title, they're going to have to have a certified vote. But we do have to move quickly on this because we're on it where the clock is ticking. So I didn't know if um, if you wanted if he can go ahead and give um, present this to Attorney Parsons or did the subcommittee want to meet and talk about it? So I just gave a copy to everyone and uh, you guys can tell me what you want to. I think you accomplished what we set out to do. Um, I mean, this is responsive to what the previous committee um, last month asked for. The only thing that I saw that was new was 2F. The deed restriction for affordable housing was kind of new. And um, is that something that we know in advance that Mr. Robert and Waitley and every that's, two, I mean, we didn't come up with that on our own. I know that. Well, he, he had two of the units were going to be. That was in his, that yeah. was in his. That was his, that was in his proposal, proposal of the second building that two out of the eight or two out of the 10 would be less expensive, 800 versus 1,000, I think it was, or 800 but, and, versus 1,000. But we had that conversation because Mr. Decker brought that up and the conversation was we didn't care what he did with it as right. after, so I mean, we can take that off if you, and I told him that. He asked me if the committee had any um, feelings about it, the, the Mr. O'Bear's use of the property, and I said no, they did not, because when Mr. Decker brought it up, you guys, all felt that it was not an issue to you I what mean, he did with the building after he took it off our hands. Just off the top, of the, you know, if it's two out of ten, then it would be twenty percent. Um, so it's, it's set up right now at twenty-five percent. So that overstates his. And it, was it? I'm trying to remember if it was two out of eight or two out of ten. 
I don't, I, 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 I don't remember the thing, but I know it was two out of something. I don't, I don't see, I mean, it's, it's uh, it, A, 2A covers us for anything like that and covers the town. But well, we have oh. to have, correct me if we're wrong, Patty, we have to have this first to give the weight lead. Correct. To let them And Mr. Have Obear first knows shot. that, yeah. right. Do you guys want it? No. Then it goes back to Mr. Obear and, right. we, and we. Well, no, we sign it with Mr. Obear and yeah. then we present it to the town and say we have a signed purchase and sales with Mr. Obear, but you have the right of first refusal. So if you refuse it, then we'll sign a purchase and sales with you. If not, this one is valid. Are they, are they doing a purchase and sale agreement on their piece of property too? Um, I, I believe, and you were there for the rest of the meeting, I believe at the town meeting, the town voted to allow the select board to enter into a negotiation with them. Yeah. That was true, right? That is true. Yes. Uh, question? Yep. Uh, is there anything in here that uh, says that we can keep our stuff there for six months? Yes. It's in, it's in here. It's 12 months. It's in here. Okay. Well, I have, we have to keep the insurance on it until we turn it over, which okay. is also so that's normal. You just want to vote to, uh, to authorize the chairman to uh, sign this particular agreement? Well, first, it's going to go to Mr. Parsons and see if he has any changes. But you, but you know what? If you vote that and there's changes, I'll just let you know what the changes are and, and we'll already have the authorization for Mr. Holler to sign and in case we need to do this before the June meeting. So why don't we, I'll make a motion that we authorize the chairman to, to, to sign the, the purchase and sale agreement uh, after council on both sides has approved it, unless there's any major modifications. Hold on. Since I've been st abstaining from voting with what's been going on with this because he does business with a company I work for right now. Should I should be able to still sign it or not? We got we got to designate somebody. We we could designate. The, I mean, somebody that was on the board. Yeah. I think you can. I think we could appoint the superintendent to sign. Or does anybody else in the meet feel like Actually, we could, want to we could authorize the secretary of the board, Mr. Mr. Cantor, to sign it. Okay. So can you repeat the motion to me? Authorize the secretary of school committee yeah. to sure. sign the purchase sure. and sales agreement. You were asleep one night. After counsel for... For the for the buyer as well as our council have worked out any of the particular details, okay? Okay. And so you don't mind signing it? I mean, I'd be happy, but have approved the document. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Dr. We're in the right direction with this. Well, we don't have a vice chairman. Otherwise, we could have designated the vice chairman. But the vice chair well, we had a vice left chair. us yesterday. Yeah. So, um, and before that happens, uh, I will, um, I, I think, Lynn, you and I should send an email to Russ to make sure that that is legal. <laughs> oh, most definitely. I mean, I'm happy to sign it. I just. But if you're going to go back and tell us how much money we got in that account, Patty? Yes, I, it, about $44,000. Okay. And I have another question. Uh, I don't know if all of you got the email. I asked the question, how much the cafeteria employees cost us in health insurance? And as my understanding, it's in excess of $80,000. And we basically serve about, say, 50,000 meals over the course of the year. I asked for that information, but I haven't got it. And uh, that is a cost that's not reflected in your cafeteria report, OK? And one of the reasons it costs us so much is if they work 20 hours a week, we're required to supply the health insurance. And the cost of the health insurance could possibly exceed what we pay for, for wages in some cases. Uh, I would like the board to, to look at it, you know, through tonight, is coming up with a policy going forward that any new employee that we hire works for three hours and 45 minutes a day and then we don't have to pay that cost. I don't want to take anything away from anybody we've got, but I think we ought to know 
what it's costing because it's not reflected in our costs. Well, we can't because it's a federal grant program. Oh, so put the federal grant programs of the health insurance in your grants, and then we don't have that problem. We can't afford to. We would have no money left for the to use the grants. We get we get very little federal I'm just grant money. You, we have all these employees. But Bob, and, and it's we, cost, have, you, we have several don't, postings. Don't want to debate it with you. No, we I'm just have, saying we have several postings in other schools for cashiers for two hours a day, and no one will take the job. I didn't say jobs. two hours. Three hours and three three quarters. You, they're going to lose 15 minutes of time. I'm just talking about new employees. They won't qualify if they're only three hours and 45 minutes. They won't qualify. I'm not saying we reorganize it and take it away today because all these people are hired and they do their jobs and they do them well. But we ought to look for the taxpayers going forward. It's what it's costing. But then that would mean for every one person that left, I'd have to hire two people because they're working five and a half hours. So I either have. Are they to working do, five and a half or four hours a day? I've got one at four here, and the rest of them are at five and a half. And then our uh, lead person will be is here six hours. So. Five and a half for, hours a day, five days a week. Yes. So one hundred and eighty. Well, I thought they only worked four hours, but they're nowhere near twenty. Every, everyone that works. Everyone that works for us right now qualifies for health insurance. We have one person that works four hours, and we have three people that work three, five and a half hours, and we have a, another person that works six hours a day, and then we have Mary who works eight hours a day. But I'm just saying it's costing us a lot of money, and you know, you know, we, we, we can't sustain the program forever when you've got a sleeping cost of $85,000 for health insurance to serve the meals. It's roughly, a, it's over a dollar a meal. It's costing you for health insurance that we're not getting reimbursed for. And, and I, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with, with yep. Mr. Oh, wait, it's coming. you got something on the agenda to raise cafeteria prices. I'm not disagreeing with Mr. With, with Mr. Decker, but I, every single person that takes these jobs, take it for the insurance, and they leave here and work a second job to, 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 to pay their bills. I didn't take it away from them, Patty. I'm just saying any anybody but knew you're you hired. holding us going forward if someone should leave. I'm just talking about the new hires. But I'm not trying to take it away. Okay, before we vote on Phil being our designee on, on this on this uh, contract, uh, Bob Decker made the motion. We de have never got a second. Second. I Thank you, Judy. Is there any other discussion about Phil? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> signing, signing the purchase and sale agreement on the Blue School. All in favor? You're a man, Phil. Well, Thank you, Phil, for your service. Make sure your record that is unanimous. I got 900. What's the name of the street that's um, like Gorian? I don't know. Uh, just a quick question. It's on from South Main Street. Street. When you go down South Main Street, it says B. The problem with the insulation uh, here. The insulation the issue. The AC is not cranking, that's for sure. Okay. Bob, Bob was kidding about it in the last meeting we had. We had a meeting in the other night on top too, so I don't, I don't have the ability to, to turn it up, so. Allison, do so you have any comments tonight? Turn it down. The cool no. Thank you. <laughs> we, we do have a student advisory for tonight. <laughs> What's your name again, please? Darian Myers. Darian is a senior. Yeah, so this right. is Darian's first and last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> but you were here, you've been here before. Don't believe Were you so. here with the group that night? From the I was show? not. I had um, a really important rehearsal that night for okay. musical, so I believe I was. So what kind of report? Love you with Fred, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, mostly just the student council. I've been on the student council for four years, and we haven't done a whole lot the second half of the year because most of the action is actually between September and December. Um, but our biggest project has been planning field day, which we've had for the past few years, and we find that it's a really nice way to sort of reunite the school before we're off. Um, for summer and so the past few meetings we've been organizing the date times um, getting approval from teachers and uh, Mr. Modesto and then organizing activities for the students to participate in. Interfield hours? Is there um, uh, is it a half a day? Mm -hmm. It starts at um, 1 30 I believe. Uh, so it's like 45 minutes? Thursday. Yeah. We can't get these yeah, kids. Every year on this, it's 45 <laughs> minutes exactly. We, we tried to get. We tried to get. Can we get a little bit more? Can we get up to get <laughs> 45 minutes? 
The issue is that May is very busy when it comes to AP exams um, and graduation. Okay, and please tell us, what, what do you have tomorrow for you? Um, I have AP literature tomorrow. Then what's the day after that? AP government. Then what's the next week? Uh, AP stats and AP human geography. So. Very, very busy, very busy person. <laughs> what's the date? Well, I was advocating Thursday. more time for, uh, you know, were you a part of today's uh, festivities or were you tested today? Uh, I was not. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> Just ask Walters asking. is laughing. <laughs> Thank you for report. Thank you. We're good luck to school. Uh, Simmons College. I'm majoring in secondary education. So. Cool. Great. Yay. Good luck. Thank you. Congratulations. Can we ever vote the eight thousand four hundred twenty-five dollars? Well, well, that's exactly what Mr. McFarland was raising his hand for. Hi there. Okay. Did we ever resolve whether we're going to use the thousand four twenty-five for the window? <laughs> The, the, to get the windows done, the yeah. 8425. Leaving $12,000 in the yeah. budget. Yeah. The $8,000 for the window thing. Second. Minus eight is part of that calculation already? Yeah, it, it, it is. It, it, it is. Oh, it so is. it's not 12. What? There's 20 left. Okay. There'd be 20 we were doing it. All right. Where, where is the I thought we voted on it. I'm sorry. No, I can. Bob got it all well, confused about Phil signing the documents. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. How's that power? motion to accept the the balance or the spending of 8425 yeah, spending. spending of 8425 to finish the complete the library window upgrades do we have a second second, second. bill all in favor that was important thank you um, Darius, you want to take the lead on the building renovation? Or? Sure. Um, so we had another meeting last week? Yeah. Just yesterday. Thursday night? Thursday. Um, we did a walkthrough with the, um, similar to the walkthrough that any of the professionals this community been on a couple of years ago, showing they wanted to see what was broken. Um, and so we did a quick walkthrough. And we, we were, I would say, satisfied overall with what we were looking at trying to fix. And now we're um, kind of committed to the point of moving forward to looking at zeroing in on the different financing options. And whether or not we go out for a bond, whether or not we do some combination. Um, the biggest thing is that the, the committee, and the committee's gonna come bring it back to the school committee. Because you know, it's a subcommittee of the school committee, so it's gonna come back here for the vote on these things. Um, and, at the last meeting, they also talked about talking with finance committee. So we're going to invite finance committee. Once we get into a little bit better idea, which will happen hopefully at the next meeting, um, Joe Markarian will be there um, to kind of give us one more kind of walk through the numbers. And then we'll kind of have different proposals to move forward, I'm hoping, at that point. And then we will reach out to finance committees. Um, the select board members felt that um, us inviting one of them directly to hear and talk, and especially um, I would say especially talk with Joe, who really um, knows the numbers even better than myself. Um, and moving forward from there. So again, our deadline is still the end of December. Um, we probably are going to have to have a meeting over the summer. We kind of were clear on that within our um, planning, if not one meeting, two meetings, um, to get the thing moving along so we're in the right place come fall. So that's kind of where we're at. And then the other thing was the um, we're asking for a good tonight. It's just in my mind. Um, creating a um, capital stabilization account for Frontier. We do need to do that. We do need this group to vote it. But um, Joe wasn't at the last meeting. I'll, I'm going to be meeting with him the next week or so um, to come up with the language. I'll bring it to June. So we'll throw that in the June agenda to vote to create capitalization subcommittee. I mean, capitalization. Um, 
capital stabilization. Capital stabilization. <laughs> Capitalization stabilization account. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, and well, that's, if there's anybody else there can jump in on what well, I'm well, the, I, the, an, the important ahead. part of the capital stabilize is we're going to come up with definitions. Um, we've been working on those, but actual definitions that are going to govern what's capital, what's not, all that stuff, like like a real like a real organization. <laughs> yeah, it, to jump on what Phil just said, one of the concerns was coming from the select board is that um, yeah, we'd be using this money to pay for deferred maintenance rather than in things that don't have the longevity that a capitalization, um, capital account should be funding. You know, um, you know for example, uh, what, what were you, they were using the example, um, you know, buying a lawnmower, you know, or, you know, you know those kind of things. We decided to rent the lift now instead of going to buy one. Right. So. so, but anyway, those are the kind of things. I just have a question um, that maybe Mr. Decker would know the answer to. What's If you guys have already voted a stabilization fund, why do we have to have another fund called capital stabilization? We're just trying to peg the money aside if we can, okay? So that we're not going to be, we're going to be getting uh, appropriations from the town. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that it's not going to get mixed up with the rest of the stabilization because the selectmen of the towns are going to want to make sure that what they give us for capital appropriation they can actually see is getting spent on the capital projects and not being mixed with everything else we do. So everything since I've been here the only thing that we've done on a stabilization is um, capital projects so what else would go into the regular stabilization account? I think they just want assurances that when they've given us 500,000 or 600,000 between the four towns next year that we're not going to spend it to, to balance our budget on something else. Mm -hmm. okay. I, think, I think that's the... Scott Scott Bergeron was pretty pretty sharp. I think he's pretty sharp. In the he is. Assault, but he was dialing in, this is, this is what the town's people are going to want to see. You know, instead of just looking for some money, this is what you need to put in there that's the only way I'm going to be able to sell it, sell it for for the schools. I mean, because you know, I think you have to give a whole presentation of what the plan is, but it's the idea is that we're creating this account because we have a first year large sum of money based on the track, which is really kind of the it's really busting any kind of other than going for um, going directly to towns just for the track would be too much. We have to get some sort of loan or that kind of thing or bonds, so to speak. Uh, but we also want to plan how do we take care of these other things over the next five to ten years. And if we can show that, create an account where we can get the money to go into the account and what we're funding for the next five, ten years moving forward, um, rather than they wanted to go away from the large, one of the ideas that's not been settled yet, is to go away from the large bond of you know around $3 million to fix everything, rather do a smaller bond, fix the core things, and then go after um, capital funding over the next few years, which is a longer, more difficult haul, but that's what we're discussing. <clears throat> it gives the towns more control. Bill, this is one of those issues that should go hand in hand with, as Patty's told us 20 times in the last year and a half, addressing the shortcomings and the, and the things that are missing from the regional agreement, because the regional agreement is silent on capital expenditure, and we get into all kinds of difficulties in trying to, to spend money and, and obtain money for capital expenditures because there's no guidance in the regional agreement for it. And there are several other areas of the regional agreement that are archaic at best. Maybe, so we need to we need to be working on the regional agreement. So maybe for next next April set of town meetings, we have some amendments and some changes in the regional agreement ready to go. I mean, we do this with the budget process every year with the timeline. We ignore the regional agreement completely because nobody knows what the hell is in it, <laughs> and the and the dates have, have, have been ignored for a variety of reasons because it's the governor's budget, senate budget, house budget. This, that, and the other thing, so we don't adhere to some of the stuff that's in there. Not to, not even to mention the stuff that isn't in there. You know, I, I agree with Billy. It, it, the agreement has to be gone through and, and modified and brought up to the, the 21st century. Because we get a lot of things in it that need to be cleaned up. And I don't want to talk about them tonight, yes. but there's a lot of things that need to be cleaned up. Uh, and going forward, we also need to think about. We've been, I know we've kicked the can 14 times. Billy's been there for 
15 times of, about K-12 and, and what have you. But we really need to get into the 21st century. And whether or not these towns, the individual towns, ever want to get involved in being somewhat progressive on trying to make sure we don't spend all kinds of money that we don't need to spend uh, because we're not doing it efficiently. So we need to talk about it. And I don't think that tonight's the night, but we need to do it. And uh, going forward, uh, you know, it, what we're doing and the, the bills you pay in the individual towns, it, you know, you, you, it's four, four invoices for everything. Yeah. Four different payrolls, four of this, four of that, the, plus the frontier. The problem is, Bob, unless the state sweetens a coffer to do K through 12, but you can go, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say it never happened, but it probably will never but, happen. But you can go K six, Bobby. And the biggest cost that we're going to have K six wise is health some insurance. of the health insurance is a little bit higher in one of the towns than the other towns. A little bit. Towns. The, it, they're just, a it, little it's bit. all across the board. But 80, 80 versus fifty, and everybody's got to come up to eighty under the law. Okay. No, not but, if we stay K to six. If we if we went K to twelve, we'd have they'd have to come up to what we are. But if we were recommending a K to six, we we'd have to go. We would have to renegotiate that because the four each town has a different rate. It it's a way brand way new way region, way okay? Way that would be a brand new region, separate and, from Frontier. Yeah, and uh, because we would have to if we did a K to I'm sorry, Mr. Decker, but if we went, did, the the biggest part of doing a K to twelve is that we would have to bring all our teachers up to the uh, up to their the salary schedule, and we don't want to do that because that would be salary plus insurance. And in most regular districts, there are two um, salary schedules. High schools always differ from elementaries in most of the districts I've been in. So that's why you wouldn't want to go K-12. But K-6, Mr. Decker's right, the biggest fight would be the insurance, but then there would also be a regional transportation that's my reimbursement. Point. And, you know, that's, that's, for, that's for another day. But, you know, history has a when I first went to school here, we had a superintendent principal, and then the principal in the how many kids unit, were in that? How many kids were in that school? About six hundred at the time, or seven hundred, more than you got today. Okay. And they they took the the regional the the, the union superintendent retired, so they decided they were going to save money, and they yoked. Them. But we never formally merged. Okay. Yep. And you know, and that, and I got out of here 54 years, guys. Okay. Enough about that. We'll get on to some new business. We got a few things. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, raising the school lunch by 10 cents. I think. I remember. Right here. No, Patty, do that. So um, we have. Um, in my six years here, we've never had an increase. The lunch has always been three dollars, and our wages have gone up, and our um, our food costs have gone up, and we've never raised the prices. And we, once again, we are forced at the elementary level to increase because we are going to once again be below the refunded amount for a free lunch. So we're re we're raising them at the. Um, elementary level and we just thought at this time we may want to go from three dollars to three ten because we have not had an increase in in so long at the high school now when we do this based upon the number of meals we've served this year to date mm -hmm. um, how much of a profit would it be in exclusive of the issue i have with the health insurance what so you get, the ten cents times how many cents a yield i don't yield. i don't i have the number of meals that we serve. I, I have to make a profit on the lunch service. Don't, that's like, it's not. No, but I'm just trying to say is if we, anything. if we're going up okay. 10 cents. So last, up to this, since the beginning of this school year, last April 5th, we had served 6,000 lunches, 6,129 lunches. Mm -hmm. So multiply that by 10 cents. 600 bucks. Yeah. Approximately. And we have so, a, yeah, might. I might think that you might want to go to three and a quarter if you're going to go up and you not, haven't done it in six years. You know, I, you know what, though, the, what strikes me here? That we just got done, Patty was cheerleading. We just got the train headed down the tracks. Now, the first thing you're going to do is throw a log across the tracks for the train. You're going to do everything that we just paid a bazillion dollars to, to do, and we're getting, getting it done, 
you're going to mess it up. You're going to screw it up by raising the price of the lunch for 600 bucks because you're not going to buy the lunch. We, we just, we're this close to getting it right. Don't mess it up now. Okay. Are you talking about the 10 cents bill or the 20 no cents? No cents. Leave it exactly where it is. Well, the, so you're going to screw it up. Move we, to, move we on, not hold, raise hold, the hold, hold, price. Hold on. Hold on. We did it lately last night. The reason why we went from 290 to three bucks, correct me if I was wrong. Two, we went from 285 to 295. And we have to because Big we can't charge. Schedules. Two, we're going to get two dollars and ninety-two cents back for every free lunch that we serve. So we can't. Our our selling price can't be oh, lower than what we get back. Is that the same thing at the high school? We're at three dollars, so we're we're still secure here. But but we have not had an increase. But I understand. I understand Mr. Smith's point too. And you know, maybe we should defer for another year and see. Um, how this goes, but in six years we've had wage increases, we've had food cost increases, and we haven't had a, um, an increase in the pricing. But I would not, I would not have a problem with not going up uh, to, to as long as, and, it, and as, long as we're fine with the federal government. It, exactly. So we're 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 going in the right direction. It seems to be we're selling more lunches, and we're headed in the right direction. Maybe it gets even better next year. Mm -hmm. Key. Just a couple of questions. What is the lunch price of each of four elementary schools? Two eighty-five, and we're recommending it to go to two ninety-five. That's the same for all of them. We keep the prices the same. Okay. And then earlier you said that if we had not hired the food service director, we would be making a profit of eight thousand dollars this year. Correct. So conceivably, next year when we don't have that cost of the food service director, there should be a profit next year if things stay the same. Correct. So you go up. Yeah. But we've also got equipment that's 20 years old that's that's starting to fall apart. So with it, so we need some money. Um, and again, I don't even think that that's on any of our capital it's repair not list. The, it's on the capital list. It's not on the A list. I mean, that ain't happening then. Yeah. I'd like to see a smoothie machine for the uh, the high school. They have a smoothie machine at Deerfield Elementary, and they love it. And uh, it's a great money maker. Um, kids like it. It's healthy. Can you rent it? <laughs> No, it, 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 it's something. If Darius would let us borrow a couple bucks, we could we could buy one. It's about four hundred dollars, uh, a commercial grade. But you put fruit in it; it's very healthy. Kids so, why don't we make a motion not to uh, take any action on the increase at this time? Why, why do we have to make a motion? Yeah. Have to do something. Just don't do it. We just <laughs> it was only on for discussion. Yeah. Well, there is a vote. So there's required. a vote. There's a oh, vote oh, there is a vote. Sorry. Okay. All right. I'm okay with being rejected. Will somebody make a motion to maintain move? current cost of school lunch? Second. All in favor? Thanks, Bill. Who's going to talk about Mr. Charles Mark? Um, I can do that. So, um, Mr. Mark. Um, is our neighbor and he uh, previously made two uh, very large donations to the school one to redo the library and the other was to set up a scholarship fund and I think that if I might memory corrects me it was about 40,000 he gave us for the scholarship well mr. mark is very astute and he came to see me and um, asked me how much money did the forty thousand dollar earn and um, we are restricted by law as to what funds we can invest our money into. So he wasn't happy with the return. So he asked for his money back and um, I, I gave him the interest plus the two awards we had made. And he took the money back and he has now set up an account where it's earning a lot more interest and he is going to um, give us the money every year so that it can earn more interest. And he has it set up that uh, should he, or when he passes away, the balance of that fund will be given to Frontier. Uh, it, the, whatever's in that fund goes to Frontier. That will be, that's part of the, uh, the fund he set up. So this year, the, his fund made, I think he made $49 less and his fund made $700. So, um, so we're, we're gonna happily accept the $700 for a foreign language uh, scholarship. So moved. How many scholarships is that going to be? Uh, that's up to the committee that... Uh, he actually came in and met with the Foreign Language Department last oh, week. Wow. He with them, and he, they were all, he could speak every language because he went right around the room talking from German to 
Russian, the French, the Spanish. He went back and forth. I was like, wow. Um, so they were all talking up, but they, he left it up to the Foreign Legion Committee to decide if they want to split it or give it to one, and it's going to be based on the applicants are and stuff. So I'm not going to give that away. I know the answer, but the applicants haven't been told. It'd be nice to have because I have to know for a fact that he has a quiver full of arrows. <laughs> he's a very nice gentleman. He's very knowledgeable, and he's also an author. And he's written um, a couple of books, but one of them's called like an immigrant's journey. He has the most fascinating background um, of anybody I've ever met. And you probably you may have seen him in town. He rides. Uh, he's like what is he like ninety five years old, and he still drives that tri like a large tricycle bike. It's, 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 Question: Do we still have money for the library? Library money is still sitting there. Yeah, he didn't take that book. <laughs> well, hopefully yes. within the next year we can. Right. Or, so or so year you understand where the, that money is. So there's thirty-five thousand dollars there to to upgrade this area. Right. The, the right. things in the library. The problem is we're, we're we're trying to get money to fix this, which will require removing the drop ceiling to put in a platform floor to increase the insulation and kind of stir everything up. Um, and put new lighting in for energy efficiency and all that. When you do that, you're going to ruin everything below it, so to speak. So we could technically, I guess we could buy furniture because you move furniture out, but we can't redo carpet or you know, fixtures and that kind of stuff. So we kind of put it on hold. It's kind of dragging. I mean, as we know, this process is longer than you know, I dreamed at the beginning, but uh, dreamer. So, you know, it's, it has been sitting there a while, and I, you know, I apologize to him for that, but we want to do it right. So. So we need a vote. So we want to make a motion. Already made the motion. And I second it. All in favor? So moved. Okay, Patty, I think you're next again. No, I think that's what Carrie is. Oh, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. If you look in your packet, there's a, uh, a document. It's, I think it's yellow. It, well, there's a yellow stripe on it. These are the non union salaries. Uh, adjustments, the uh, raises for non-union employees, and what we've done, um, what was established before my time, and what we've been doing is um, essentially a COLA of two percent uh, each year, and it mirrors the uh, the three-year CBA for the teachers and the IAs, the two percent. So these are the uh, these are already in the budget. We did include them in the budget when we built the budget. But these are the salaries that I'm recommending for uh, for next year school year. And we'll be voting on this next, next meeting month. in yeah, June. Next meeting. This is just for your uh, information. Gonna, any other discussion on this? If not, we'll move right along. Um, discussion, appointment of cafeteria, cafeteria team leader with a vote in June. Well, we presented that in April at the school committee, joint school committee meeting, but apparently it wasn't in the minutes of the meeting because I said we were going to vote in May, but because it wasn't in the minutes that we presented it, Donna says that we can't vote for it until June. So um, we gave you, again, the job description and the salary um, the scale that will go along with it. Um, and then I guess we're going to vote in June. But these, sure. but these are, sal these when we talked, we had talked that these would be go back to January because we had originally told you we'd have it ready for January. So anything that get, if this gets approved, these people will get retro back to January. And they and then the schedule that you're looking at has them already moved and not changing, so they won't get another step or a percent increase in June because they're going to get it in January. Make sense? Till they combine. So this is the one that when you were trying to get approval by the towns to participate in the food service director position, the shared food service director position, this was. What you dangled out in front, I know um, 
the Conway School Committee, you dangled that in front of them and, and said that the current food service person is, is going to have a new role. Is going to this it, is the new role, and, and that they're going to end up supporting all the changes because this because of this thing. And so this is the long-awaited thing that was supposed to happen then. Right. And, we gave it to you in April at the joint meeting. Mary Mary presented it. Right, but the the employees still have no idea that this is correct because <laughs> you haven't approved it yet. Okay. Okay. That was the right answer. No. <laughs> so this is just a better benefit and a job title for existing personnel. There's no new personnel. There's no new personnel. Okay, Everybody's fine. already fulfilling this role. Okay. So. Well, There's you're no not supposed to vote until June. Yeah. Second Because it wasn't right. in the minutes of April. Okay. Well, couldn't we amend the minutes in April and then, uh, well, never mind. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, the, the problem was it was presented in the joint committee and not, and then it's meant to be voted on with the individual committees. But it, she presented in the, the joint committee. And, and I apologize because I did not put down um, that particular piece about the cafeteria team here. That's all right, we can vote again. Yep. Next is request to use a free cast discussion vote in June. So this goes back to Mr. Scanlon when he presented the audited financial statements that um, there is there is an accounting error with the way that we are withholding the insurance um, with our employees. And this is something that I've been trying to have addressed for the six years that I've been here because it just doesn't, it's never made sense to me. So Mr. when we brought on Mr. Scanlon, I brought it to his attention and he did one year, this is his second year of testing, and he's in agreement that, that the correction needs to be made. So he had asked um, me to wait until after his tax season <laughs> to work with him, and um, he's just been very busy. So I told him, listen, I, I don't have much time. I got two meetings left, and they've got to vote the use of the free cash. So we're going to put it on for discussion without a number. But in June, we'll have the actual number. So I have a date. Um, I have my assignment of what he needs me to get done. And then we will be meeting, and we'll know the amount. But we don't think that it will exceed $60,000. But that's the number that you were talking about originally was 60. Correct. We're hoping it's a little take. low. But then again, they just, uh, you know, they, he, we were talking last year, 60,000, but now they it just increased to like 5% and 3%, and that'll be the July and August, so it might be a little more. So um, I'm hoping it's not going to exceed 60,000. But just like you guys always want, you want it presented in one month and voting in the next. And unfortunately, um, Mr. Scanlon just didn't have time uh, to, to work with me to get the number. So what do we have in the free cash account? Uh, we... I believe we have like $125,000. So that'll leave us roughly 60. Did we get half? I get a, I, I get a, uh, I, let me pull up yeah. my budget documents. Um, let me just pull this up real quick. I, I hate not having a mouse. I can't work this stupid thing <laughs> without the mouse. They're not that expensive, Penny. Oh, I just forgot to bring it. <laughs> Darius, do you think in June we can have the air conditioner going in here? <laughs> Depends what's on the agenda. Well, <laughs> the going to be? There's a name here at the top. We might postpone it. <laughs> Good point. I'll get that AC fixed. What are you looking up, Patty? Uh, the assessment. I'm looking for my assessments because I know in my assessment page that I have the, the summary of the free cash. The other thing is we might want to think about in our June meeting, we may have a better handle on what accounts are already overdrawn before we, uh, you know, wiggle around with whatever money we have. We have free, with free cash. We might have to use it. For what? If, she, if, we, if we don't have enough money, we only have $20,000 to play with. You know, in the current year budget, we might have to find some money. Sorry, this is taking so long. I'm just trying to get the right document up to the page to do it. You got $3.4 million in unspent budget balances and six weeks to go. So I'd, like, I'd like to think we can make it. Me too. $786,521.11. How much are you 
budget that was. While Patty's looking at a, let's, let's just move along to. We have $146,283. Okay. All Thank right. you. Pressure. I'll leave us about 80000 Eighty six. Um, a little bit. So we, the policy committee, the three members are on this board, and we've been meeting um, quite often. We've actually finished the ones that we had set out this year to do, and they've all been emailed to you. What has come to my attention um, afterwards was there's two that the principals had read about and they had questions about. And one is school choice and one is the uh, acceptable use uh, of computer uh, policy. And the piece in the school choice one talks about two lotteries or two uh, choices. And the, the first being in June and the principals felt that that was too late to have it open, that they would lose applicants for school choice. So what I've done is um, address that, cut out some pieces, reworded it, and I will send that to the committee for, I will send it to the committee, but we can't really deliberate because it's, we have to meet, but I would like the, I would like to have those, that one voted on in June as well. So I don't know if you can give me five minutes and then we could, you know, send it. It's in my yeah. office. If you could give me. You time. send. We send it. Well, Donna sent it out yesterday. The school choice one. Yes. Oh, with the acceptable use policy. Yes. Oh, well then. To everybody. Those are the ones that we've done. I didn't know that um, she went forward with that. Well, and then we redacted a sentence out of the acceptable use that says the principal and/or superintendent designee will be checking social media for anything that a uh, an employee would be doing, and that's just we just can't do that. So, and I don't know if Darius has anything else I to add. Qu I mean, I had some small questions on some of them as they, because you, you both of them, you, know, you know how these policies get put away until there's a problem, and then you know, that works. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm looking at the social media policy, and I mean, obviously the, the one thing that we were going to watch all the teachers, um, websites that was going to, or social media was going to be, uh, mm -hmm. the, it's being opted probably to be removed. You know, I was looking at it, it says, um, you look at number 1D, it says all contact and message by coaches, faculty, advisors, with team members shall be sent to all team members except messages concerning medical or academic privacy matters, in which case the message will be copied to the appropriate administrator. Um, and then the one below that, the teachers might give out their private cell phone or home phone numbers. Well, when they text out currently practice, what happens now with their, a lot of our coaches is we don't supply them with phones. So they will say, you know, practice can't, let's say they do Saturday practice. They bloated everybody in, practice is canceled today. They just gave everybody their private cell phone number in violation of this policy. Um, I was talking with Allison actually, and when she goes to Washington DC with the older kids now, um, she gives her a cell phone out to anybody in case they get broken up, you know what I mean? Or divided, that kind of stuff. And so again, it was just kind of, um, yeah, the concerns regarding to what level. And then, I don't know, I just had an overall concern about, it just talks about inappropriateness of posting, exhibiting the advocacy use of drugs and alcohol. So if, you know, if a teacher is showing a toast at their daughter's wedding, they're using drugs and alcohol, you know, to what level are we supervising? And so that's just my concern because our job is to, administratively, is to enforce it we know we have to have guidelines on it based on based on last fall, but at the same time, I also want to make sure that we're, I don't know, what, at what level do you have freedom of speech, and I don't want to get us in trouble there. So can we put something in there that would say, um, I don't know, at the, at the discretion of the principal's superintendent, or, I mean, how would you address that? The cell phone thing makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, but I would, I would qualify that with for personal business. Teachers would not give cell phones to kids for social and or personal business. If it's coaching or field trip, most definitely. In one other district that I was in, um, in order to control this with the sports, that is why there's a captain of the team. So the coach would only 
text the captain of the team and it was the captain of the teams to give the, the, the information to all the other team members. So the coach was only in touch with one person and not the entire team. It and doesn't, but that doesn't protect that one person. I know, but it, but it, it limits your exposure to the whole team. Yeah, well, so. it also implies that every child that would be on a team, a captain, would have to have a cell phone. Now, we know everybody True. does, but what if that child is um, the, not economically uh, in a disadvantage and they don't have a cell phone? Right. So if, if I could put that qualifier for not for social and per, personal reasons or whatever, and um, qualify that so that we're covered if someone, again, puts on Facebook something totally inappropriate that we've experienced. Now, the other piece that you're talking about is... Um, I don't know, or, or, you know, um, was the... Yeah, I'll Talking about inappropriate posting of exhibiting and advocating use of drugs and alcohol, examples of inappropriate behavior from other districts as a behavior to avoid. So is that kind of, and I didn't really understand what that, I was just looking. So if, my, my interpretation would be, if I was giving a toast at a wedding or I'm with a champagne, that's, that's an appropriate yeah. use. Now, if I'm laying down drunk, having a cheeseburger out of my mouth, this is David Lossifer, I don't know if you know that. But if I'm, that's not okay. But that's not appropriate. But if, if you're with a group of people and you're all smile, I, um, I would. I, mean, I, I don't know what. I, yeah, I don't know. Allison, of, what do you think? I mean, not that I'm taking over the meeting because I'm not. It's just um, if it's, I, I think the things that are involving people's personal lives and their, their social media accounts is, I mean, the NPA reminds all the teachers not to have social media sharing accounts with students all the time. That we let our membership know every year. You cannot be friends on Facebook. Um, you know, we're not supposed to follow kids on Twitter. Once a student graduates, they're not students anymore, so that can happen. Um, but for us to have our Facebook pages monitored and stuff, I mean, you know, it could be families. I think some of the language is just... Well, we took out the piece about monitoring yeah. Facebook. Uh, these are recommended by the Massachusetts Association of School, uh, school Committees. I mean, three of the committee members are here, so there's a quorum of the policy committee. But my concern is we can take it out, uh, but then... There's nothing to protect us. What if happens we, if, when another thing happens like what happened well, last fall? You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I definitively remember um, when I was being hired, Mr. Cantor asked me if he looked at my Facebook page, what would he find? Because it does now, whether we like it or not, social media comes into play with hiring decisions. So when you're saying monitoring your Facebook pages, employers do it. Because it's 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 out there for the public. It's shared. Absolutely. Well, no. we wouldn't make a practice of monitoring. That's not it. But when something like last fall happened, that little line in there, inappropriate use. If I'm part, you know, with my friends at a dinner or, uh, you know, is celebrating in a certain way, I don't think that's inappropriate. But if if I am naked with you know, with a joint or something, that would not be okay. That would be terribly, terribly wrong. And that would be, that would be worse. Well, you know. wanted your wow, we don't care. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That was, is that the policy at, at Maher? I mean, if it's a general policy that yeah. their schools are using, I didn't know that. So, and I know, and I know there's language that the MTA has out re regarding warning their members. I, don't know, I, just now, I think that what you, the, the concerns that you identified are perfectly legitimate and that the policy should work for the school. It doesn't matter if every other school has, you know, everywhere has something, but it, we don't have to do it the way it, it should work the way it should work. So, um, but if we don't know. have something. So, this. Yeah. So um, can we look at what the MTA has put out and say something like following the MTA guidelines? Because they do tell them not to do all this stuff. 
Um, I would hesitate only because we have non-union people that would also be held to that high standard that are not members of the MTA. We right. have non-union people that, that would be me if right. I was yeah. at a yeah. party. Yeah. Yeah. Naked with a joke. Yeah, right. But I would never. I would know how to do that. I wouldn't know anything. I can't believe I said that. So. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Uh, have the, we shared these with our esteemed council? to make sure that he's actually reviewed them before we adopt these policies. Oh, he may have some words of wisdom. And I, would imagine, yeah, right. I would imagine the MASC yeah. has had their lawyers yeah. looked at every single one of these new policies. Yeah. Some of them are brand new that we don't have policies on. Some of them are that we're changing, and some of them are just a couple words well, what or a word coming out and a new word being inserted. But if, what I'm saying, if we're changing it from what the, the boilerplate that came out from the school committee association, the council probably should look at it and, and see are we going off or aren't we? I don't know. And you what, see how a lawyer writes? Yes. Follow that. Yeah, I mean, this is not his bailiwick. Right. Um, no. and this is, Nothing is his bailiwick. Well, he doesn't do merchants right. and sales it, either. No, this is his bailiwick. No, this it's is, not. Yes, the, it idea, is. the idea that we have to run everything <laughs> He's through. a retainer. Yeah. What great. does his... We what did. does his uh, when he when he oh, engaged what the engagement letter say that he was going to do for us for five hundred fifty dollars? He does school committee policies. That's part of his job. Later. We um, did ninety nine policies, so I'm just wondering. I I don't know what to say. I honestly don't. It was a lot of hard work, and we uncovered a lot of little rocks, and, and I kept coming back with new information. So I learned, we all learned, um, really these were not rubber stamped. I have to tell you, long discussions involved uh, all of these. However, if it is something that you think should be taken out, then we could. Uh, I, I maybe don't we could pull that one and try to reword it or something. I don't My, know. Yeah. The only and, and maybe we could ask our attorney if he's got other school districts with other wording. So, so the only, again, the only thing is, is without a policy, I mean, I, I understand that regardless what happened last fall, it, it wouldn't have been okay because, mm -hmm. but everyone was overage at that point. I don't know. Without a policy, I don't know what to say well, and the whole the key word is inappropriate it, yeah. it's not it, it going it, on a field trip is not inappropriate to give your phone number out or teacher give to the kids right. or the coach giving out the phone but we're going to change the language in that one yeah I'm that set language, on that you know, for social reasons. I, I have a couple other ones that are just small language ones then i don't mean to yeah. kind of derail it but they're just i didn't realize i, I could give them to you then you could change them prior to yeah. this meeting i didn't want to give it to the whole committee because there was no Anyway, the other one is school choice. It says number three, resident students will be given priority placement in any classes or programs within the district. That reads differently in the high school than it does in the elementary school. So in the elementary school, you won't get bumped from a class. Here, oh, AP physics is full. Your school choice, you're out. This kid's in. Varsity baseball team is a program at the school. You're out, you're in. You know, lead to the play. You know, you start. You can go into. Someone could say that it says, "I don't know." I just think. I just maybe they should say something that, in regards to the high school, or or the wording on that. Or do, am I reading it differently? Is this something that we have? Is this number three? School choice, it says school choice. This is what number under the school choice one. Number three. Resident students will be given priority placement in any classes or programs within the district. Mm -hmm. And does that mean? Could could one read that and say that means your class schedule? I think parents could. Yeah, I mean that's good. We do we do have classes say. that fill and people get bumped, and we usually do it by seniority. Great. Your seniors yeah. get it first, juniors right. get second. So and on you want to change the language in that? That was a good catch. Then. And so I just yeah. I didn't yeah. want that because that will be used if we yeah. totally. someone gets yeah. bumped, and you know we do have 160 school choice kids. So. So you wanted to say residents? No, just just delete that little price no. placement in How schools. About I can delete it. Right. right. Yeah. I'll strike that Yeah, because I think by law, yeah, I think you're, yeah. because yeah, that would give some parents a good excuse oh, not yeah. to bring their kids here. Can you have another one? Um, student fundraising. 
we talked about this one a lot. Yeah. The, my only concern there was, should it say other fundraising activities which involve students in fundraising processes should be submitted to the superintendent for approval or their designee? There is a lot of fundraising of that. Those all have to go down to the superintendent's office. It just doesn't. Right now, the right now the principal approves all the. We have a approval right, so process want, for all fundraising. So you want or their designee. Or designee. Okay, we can put that. I in. just think it, it was just bottleneck in the superintendent's Easy. office for no reason. And then the last one, it said, and I don't know if this is the law, but it um, is the submission of approval of school improvement plan no later of July first. We've always done it in the we fall. We took that out. Are you looking at the improved one? We took that out. Is that one got? Was that removed? Yeah. Or is that the one that's being removed? What? Uh, well, we what's about what's the fall. number of that one? That is BDFA E-3. Submission of approval of the school right, improvement so plan. Those are the ones that got. Sent. Is that the group that? Yeah. No, we. BDFA. No, we changed that. Huh? This what's was the, the number. This was the last group that. Oh, we had two that went out, and then we had one that was released like on Friday or something last week. And I just didn't know if that's if that's the law or because there's no way school council no. makes it, and that would be the. We entire. changed it. We okay, changed Jess. it that um, to be uh, where we were. Did we change the date? We changed it. Um, I, I guess think it's to not December on the list. or something like that. Okay. Good. All right, I'll check. If that it's changed, one. it's fine. It is changed. Good. If you find any more, it was. No, I have none left. I'll forward them next time to you. I didn't know we can change them prior to the meeting if the committee sent them out to everybody. All right. So the the rest of them are there. Um, you, the top copy is what we changed it to the bottom will tell you what came whether it's added in red or we stri we striked out we struck out what was what was happening uh, what the what the words were so so i guess we just had the question on the social media policy we decided to take that no we decided to leave it in because the keyword is inappropriate and that's where the interpretation would come, and that would be the MTA's interpretation versus the school. But I would not, I would, uh, I would, would ascertain that we would not, unless it was truly inappropriate in a situation like last fall, as opposed to anything else. And I would trust that 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 would be we would really the key word there is inappropriate. I can't imagine there would be any trouble interpreting what's appropriate and inappropriate. Oh, I'm quite good. I mean, it's, it's a committee's decision to decide how they want to do it. I was just pointing out Mary? You know, what, what I read through my, but I, it just kind of was like, ooh. Yeah. I just wanted to ask um, something about cell phones. Um, might maybe more procedural, and maybe something you guys have already discussed, but um, they do have cell phones of teachers, and coaches from trips and all of that. Once they have your cell phone, they have it. And so to be thinking about what happens on Friday night at 11 o'clock, somebody's in trouble, somebody's unsafe, and they text this teacher. Um, so there's two parts to that. Your staff knows what to do if their phone is on and they actually see it, but they know who to notify, they call the police. Um, but also what if they miss that text and there's a, what happens then? what happens if something happens and it was a text you missed. And I only bring it up because it's it's something we've dealt with. And just to, so that people know what to do. Yeah, okay. You know. Any questions? No. We have not, yeah, we haven't done any training. <laughs> I mean, well, it's part of our world. Everybody yeah. has everybody else's cell phone, but, you know, students do reach out. Yeah, I, I, as the subcommittee, we frequently thought, you know, what is what would Darius and others that are in charge of implementing this policy think of it? And it, we, a lot of the times, we kind of felt like uh, we were treading on you know, sort of unsteady waters, or whatever, just because. Oh, all right, get it. So, my, so, my, and so I'm not, I'm I guess not, we're, I'm we're not being, I'm not being, I'm only being critical because I'm looking at those are ones that. No. 
they will come back and they'll say you didn't enforce yeah. your policy and we're like right now i can see that it's very difficult to enforce and so we want a policy that works i mean policies yeah. as you know for school committee that's so what, what you guys do what i was getting to is that i think that whatever uh, all, all of your recommendations I, I i would just vote to incorporate them um Okay, so you well, want I asked to take more out questions the than, I, than I was being yeah, I know, but so I was like, I didn't know what the thinking was or where the idea. Um, you so you I mean? want so to take out the inappropriate use on social media, uh, the drugs and alcohol. Uh, I, I, is if that, if that's, if that's what, I mean, what, if, that's what if that's what if that's what you the thinking was. Um, Allison, chime in if you like. I'm, well, I'm away. I just found that there was some of this language that was very fuzzy, so it would probably be unclear reading this policy saying, well, what, what does this mean? So maybe some clarification of, of what it is. Um, I know that um, students, I mean, sometimes we have to um, give them our cell phone numbers. Our personal home phone numbers, we've got landlines, they're published. So, you know, everybody's got, so it's not as if we can keep that secret from anybody because the, the school directory is out there and, you know, people look us up in the phone book, believe it or not, and they call us at home. Um, so some of, some of this just seems like it, it, maybe it's just the language needs to be more clear about. So do you because, want, are you saying the cell phone that we don't put a qualifier on, we don't give our cell phone number for social or personal reasons, just school related reasons, or I could take, we can take that right off, that qualifier. I, mean, I like that. I, mean, I like that line. It's that it's used for school business. Any contact regarding it should be for like our email for school well. business only. Like, you know, students email us just the same way that if somebody had a cell phone number, they might text. So um, you know, they email at ten o'clock in the morning, right? Or ten o'clock at night. You know, on the weekend, they have a question. So okay. So the next one that we're looking at is inappropriate. Uh, reference to drugs and alcohol on social media. Take it out? Or? I think you can leave it. After hearing what you said, after hearing what you said, I think you can leave it. I mean, the, you know, you, you're, you're right to emphasize inappropriate. Uh, you know, I, I eventually went to like, you know, I don't know. Well, no, that picture you know, of me. <laughs> <laughs> I did not go to that picture of you, but I, I, I was, I, said I don't know, I was just thinking of, you know. You also have, if it's inappropriate, also advocating use of drugs and alcohol. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, what about, why, why aren't we talking about tobacco use? I mean, because it's not, I, that's illegal for children as well. Well, back in the day, you know, Marlboro we used have a to huge vaping jackets problem. and stuff. We, we have a huge vaping problem. And, and we have a tobacco policy in school already. It's a separate mm -hmm. policy. And it includes vaping. Yeah. I just want to let you know, when I was in high school, we could smoke outside in a designated area as students. Okay, I'm not sure what the age was or the yeah. thing, but we had a designated smoking area outside, believe it or not, at Southwick. And teachers had, teachers had smoking rooms. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Back in, the day. in Springfield, as a student in high school up. in the 70s, I, we could go out and smoke. Yeah. Not that I would ever. When I first came to the school committee as a 19-year-old oh, kid, meeting in the conference room with a building that isn't there anymore, you couldn't even breathe <laughs> in that room. <laughs> One guy smoking a pipe, none of them smoking a cigar, and a couple of them smoking cigarettes. In the meeting, in the room, that's the way it was. All right. I... Um, if it's okay with the committee members, the subcommittee, I'll um, I'll actually work on these. We'll send them out again, and we'll include the principals. Uh, these three: uh, the teach, the social media, and the school choice, and the fundraiser with the qualifier or designate. And and then we'll uh, send them out to everyone. Great. They make great sense, and. Um, the policy committee was great. We learned a lot. We did a lot of work, and should we get together for those other two? If we, you want to, and you're off. You oh, after. The meeting. Let's do it tonight. Oh, yeah, it'll do be. We have that? Oh, we didn't post it. Right. We can't talk about it tonight. So why don't you do it? We've been doing Tuesdays, right? Maybe next Tuesday. Take a look at you. Look at your calendar. See if Tuesday's good. Tuesdays have been good for us, right? I think I have Sunderland. Uh, but yeah. we can 
What time do you have Sunderland meetings start? Six. So it's so not we can go to CF a little after at five o'clock. I'll have Donna post it. Is that okay? Just a short meeting. Like, yeah. like I can do that. Six yeah. minutes, and we'll be looking at one, two, three policies. Okay. And then, if, Never. if you guys approve, if you folks approve, we'll send them out to the whole school committee because it would be right. great to have all of this done by June. Yep. I think it would be great for everyone to have it done. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have nothing as chair. Anything at the collaborative? The collaborative, um, we haven't met since the last time. I did get the evaluation form in for the super for the director. If anybody's got anything they want to share, then I can reflect in the evaluation. Kindly let me know. Uh, but I don't see anything wrong with the gentleman's performance at this point. Are they still looking for a new building, Bob? You know, for some reason, they've been they've been awful silent, Bob, and I don't know why. Uh, you know, it's sometimes they they work in strange ways. And I think a lot of it deals with what monies are available. And uh, I, I'm not sure if we meet the end of May or uh, we're going to meet the end of June. But I know we, I have the forms to do the evaluation and I've seen the evaluations from the superintendents. They've all been shared with us. And uh, you know, it's just uh, one of those things, Bobby. Thank you. Mr. Darius, you want to go over your? Yep, I passed it out to you. Um, you can find a bunch of papers. So today was Teacher Appreciation Day during the Teacher Appreciation Week. A little ice cream celebration with the teachers. Um, it's kind of the month of testing. You've kind of heard a little bit of the AP test. There's probably a different AP test every single day. I believe we're giving 14 different AP tests. We also had MCAS today for um, middle school math. Um, and then you have middle school science coming up next week. So it's just um, lots of them cast, lots of testing. Isn't that fun? The arts, um, last weekend was Fred, um, the student presentation uh, of the arts. We also have the middle school concert tonight. And then next week is the high school concert. And then we also have our annual um, arts showcase day where we take a period of the day, that's next Tuesday as well, where the students rotate between the different arts um, student presentations throughout the um, from the different areas, and they get to share that, and so we spend the day celebrating the arts there. So that's kind of happening there. Um, NHS induction was last Wednesday, and where we have 26 juniors were inducted, and then graduation is just around the corner at June 1st. Um, and of course, you're all invited. Prom, Prom Saturday. Oh have a date. No, um, Prom is Saturday as well, and that's going to be at the log cabin. You need any help? The prom? Yeah. No, we're in good shape. Scott, I, myself, go. Uh, Officer Ravich goes now. Um, that's kind of the. We have it. Knock on knock, wood. But we, we, we have good kids. And they're gonna. They're gonna make good decisions. I, uh, I met. I met the baseball team one day when they were leaving over here, and I caught behind Chris, put my arm around him, choked him out a little bit, and I put the fear to God in all of them. Talking about prom parties and driving drunk, and I think their eyes were wide, wide open. By the time and that's what you'll tell you. What else is not on here? Officer Ravich did a um, drunk driving um, last Friday. Did a senior assembly um, at one o'clock, where they he has the cars that they drive and they wear the goggles and they have to go through the course to simulate being on the impaired. And then they give you know, it's kind of funsy that kind of thing. And then. Um, uh, Chief Pachera came as well, and then they kind of gave it to him. They gave the real speech about, you know, awful things that happened, and it's not just about, you know, driving drunk, but under any influence and the collateral damage of that. So it was, you know, it was both interactive, but also the heavy stuff, too. It was a little bit of both. So that was that happened last week as well. I should have had that on there. <clears throat> Thank you. Yep. And we have the superintendent's report. Thank you. So I am, I'd like to start by informing the school committee that I will be resigning as of June 30th. And thank you for the opportunity and letting me be a member of your community. 
I am also going to hand out, this came from Policy Committee. I worked on this form with the Director of Special Ed, Karen Ferrandino, and the elementary, uh, the early elementary coordinator. Uh, one of the things that came up while we were going through the policies was how many programs we have or how many specialized programs where uh, students sure thanks where students from one uh, district or part of our union would go to another school what goes on at frontier they have all these names what do these names mean so we taught uh, they asked me to put them down and really define them so that people would have a better understanding people on the school committees would understand so when we talk about wings or when we talk about horizons or we talk about FTEP and what what's the life skills when we talk about life skills, what does that mean? So these were the uh, these are the different programs that um, the district offers, and they are excellent, every single one of them, and they do save us uh, a tremendous amount of money in out of district placements, and they also a lot of them uh, bring in tuition. For instance, in Conway, the tuition that is brought in by uh, out of district place students helps it pays the program and Conway has three students in their program Conway itself and they do not have to pay any tuition because it's in their district but that money would have been a, a considerable cost had they had to send those children out so these, these are definitely well worth uh, these programs they do a great job it was uh, it was something during the policy when you guys just asked a simple question didn't know how many programs we had I know Waitley didn't have any programs. I knew there was one at Deerfield, Conway. I found out there's one in Sunderland, and how many different ones we hear. I have here at the high school, which is, I knew there was some, but I didn't realize how many, who was there, four? I mean, that's a lot, and as far as I know, it's, unless it's changed, we, we don't send anybody out of district because we have these programs at the elementary and at the high school unless that's we, we, we do have, have one. two or three out of district one we just had just to now send. just now right? the, the cases become so complex that um, they need a more kind of a more involved placement but uh, we have quite a few you'll see in the parentheses numbers and those are the amount of students that are in these programs so we service a lot of children that otherwise would not be in their home schools so it's a great thing. Need a vote. Yep. So I need a motion and a vote on um, Dr. Carey's. Mr. Resident. Moderator. Yes, sir. I move we accept Lynn Carey's notice of, notice of resignation with deep regret. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. He's not the moderator, by the way. Just called you Mr. Moderator. Oh, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All in favor? Do we have discussions? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Do we have one more meeting in June? Yep. All right, and then for me personally, I'm gone for the whole summer. I come back. What, what's the process? Who's sitting in this chair in the fall? What do we do then? Uh, we're in the process. If you got the email, recent email about, it was sent out last week to all school committee members about picking either the 21st, 22nd, or the 24th for a joint meeting to discuss um, two things, Patty's new contract and also to get started on a new new superintendent. So it's in. Yeah, no, I answered that. Okay. I didn't know what like what's. That's what that's what's on the going to be on the agenda. Okay. On, we, we did a do date yet? We did a doodle. Yeah. And if everybody responded, we're trying to get we're trying to see out of those three dates the most people we can get on out of those three dates. I don't think everyone had respond. There's still. Yeah. Oh, boy, I'm going to say there's still like ten people who haven't responded yet. So I think uh, I'll ask Donna maybe to send out a little, another little reminder to doodle and give us an idea. I mean, some people put on all three days like myself. Uh, uh, Damien, not here, he, he won't be here the whole week because he flies that whole week. Um, but, you know, that's, that's, that's what, right now that's what's gonna be on the agenda. It's gonna be the reorganization of this board and then we're also going to take up uh, going forward on the search for a superintendent or the procedures we're going to use. Well, the reorganization of Frontiers 
group? That's what that's what I think. Well, that you doesn't happen until the no, no, no. He he no, wanted to know the search process. Wait. Okay, yeah. I don't think we do the reorganization of Frontier School Committee until fall. Well, we haven't done fall. it. We haven't done it in early because of some of the Bodie. boards hadn't replaced their members and what have you in the elections. Conway's elections are next uh, 17th. Yeah. And is there any elections after the well, ours is ours is in Waitley is June. So basically we can't the board can't really reorganize till after the June. We could. There's no one running against me in, in Waitley unless somebody writes in. So well <laughs> we know how write-ins work. Yeah. Nothing wrong with write-ins. <laughs> um, but that's that was the plan, Keith. Do we have a? Do we have a? Second. Vote? You have a motion. A second. second. All in favor? Need a motion to adjourn. I have, I have one more question. Yes, sir. Because the last couple of years, I've heard a lot about references regional regional agreement, going back looking at the regional agreement. I mean, I mean, nothing ever gets done. So not looking to open it up. What would be the process by which we would actually start to look at it? Would we form a subcommittee? What uh, would be members of individual towns? How would we actually start to look at the regional agreement? Because Bob's right. It's an antiquated document. It needs to be brought to the 21st century. We need to bring Steve Hammond from the school committee Regional School Committee Association here to make a presentation so that you can actually sit there and listen to him. He, he is the expert on regional school agreements and you know he's a former superintendent and it's worth it if we can get him here so that people who are new to the board can actually understand the procedures. Uh, otherwise you, the selectmen can start it or we can start it. We can vote to amend our agreement tonight. Would, if we had it on the agenda, and then it would go to each one of the towns to either approve or disapprove. I mean, it's so it uh, has to be a four for four. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's a uh, it's a four for four. Well, last and time they were here, it came up in yep. four different places from the audience. You know, it's time that they were something. interested. Yes. So they know something's done. Something. But the we had a whole meeting here uh, five or six years ago, and Stanley Rosenberg. Uh, made the comment when, when K-6 was brought up that, oh, this, the Department of Education is never going to approve a K-6. Well, and afterwards, they, they approved a whole bunch of them. But we got told we couldn't have it, they couldn't do a K-12. All they wanted at the time was K-12s, okay? But they've since approved several sixes. Yeah. But if, if you want to have Steve come or somebody like that, you know, it, 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 he loves to come and he puts on a, a good presentation. I'm just wondering because I, it gets brought up a lot, but then I feel like nothing really ever gets done from it. And I'm wondering how seriously will we take actually to looking at it? Is that something we want to engage in next fall uh, over the course of the school year to, be, to really begin looking at it and seeing what changes can be made? Um, and, not, and I think not necessarily looking to um, to work cooperatively, not necessarily to look to, you know, put hit the towns against each other, but more to bring the document into, um, I mean, what's it like, 65 years? It's, it's been a long time. 1957 or so. Last time it was amended was like six years, seven, ten years ago or something like that. It's in the 2000s, but um, it's well, the remarkably absent on, the, on everything. We had the amendment with the one man, one voting. And then we had an amendment uh, a few years before with the five-year averages. You know, it has been tweaked, but we've never done a comprehensive throwback. Meaning money-wise. A lot of questions. There's a motion pending. I think we all voted already. I didn't all, vote. No. All in favor? Oh, who actually, it was... I made the motion. Nobody seconded it. Okay, Phil Cantor to adjourn. Second, Judy Pierce, and it is. Phil, so where did you?